Hi Chelsea fans, Chelsea news today and it's featured on an interview with Antonio Conte and he reveals all. Antonio Conte talks of transfer targets that never came. He talks of what happened with Diego Costa, of Roman Abramovich's involvement with training, with things like that and also the legacy that he left at Chelsea. It's all in this video. Make sure you stay tuned to the end to hear all of it. Let's get cracking. So Antonio Conte arrived at Chelsea, having left the Italian national team, doing great with them, coming to England, into Chelsea, and let's just say this, that first season, absolutely unbelievable. He walked in the door, he said to the players, you carry on playing the way you've been playing, in the shape and let's see what happens. He realised after defeat to Arsenal and defeat to Liverpool, at half-time against Arsenal, he knew that things had to change. He made that switch, the famous switch to a back three, and Chelsea just flew from there, won the title in that season, an outstanding performance. And what an impact Antonio Conte made. Just a shame it wasn't the same in the second season and that he left the club. But he's been talking, he's been doing... Uh, a long, extensive article with The Telegraph, and there's so much to feature from this particular interview, I just had to do it in one video. So, first up, Antonio Conte's been talking about two players that he wanted the club to sign, and the club never got them, and we can see now that was a mistake. Now, Conte revealed after Chelsea won the league title, in that season, that fantastic season, he asked... Chelsea for two players to build and to bolster the squad with the options that he had available. He asked for Romelu Lukaku and Virgil van Dijk and this is what happened. He said this, I asked for two players and we we're very, very close after we won the league. One player was Romelu Lukaku, the second was Virgil van Dijk and these two players were very, very close. We we're in contact every day and I always said that with these two players we would improve my team by 30%. I think maybe we lost the momentum to bring Chelsea at the very top and then to stay for many years. It was a pity that it didn't happen and Romelu is showing with my Inter that my idea was right and also Van Dijk has shown with Liverpool that my, my idea was right for the club. Virgil van Dijk and Romelu Lukaku. Imagine those two being signed. Obviously we knew at the time that Lukaku and Morata is between the two of those. It looked as though Lukaku's agent wanted to pay, have a big fee paid to him directly, which Chelsea refused to do. Maybe that had some sort of influence in the actual deal. But you think Lukaku went to Man United, scored goals, obviously, then had a bit of a falling out with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, has gone over to Inter Milan and just scores goals for fun over there. And we all know what Virgil van Dijk has done to Liverpool and their defensive line and where it's taken them. Imagine those two at our club and what we could have possibly achieved in that second season. Now to Diego Costa. And we all know that there was a bust up and the so-called, you know, being dumped over, the, over a text message. And Antonio Conte has actually come out and he's actually spoken for the first time about the situation with Diego Costa and what happened and why he left. And it's quite revealing, to be honest, because the impression that you've got is that Antonio Conte told him he doesn't want him, he's not part of the plans anymore, sent him that text message and that was it. And for all of us, it was quite difficult to understand. But Antonio Conte reveals it's a different story altogether. He said this, First of all, I'm a person that doesn't want to speak badly about a situation with a player from a club that I've trained. It was always right to keep good memories and I prefer to keep good memories also about Diego Costa because we won together a league title in an incredible season. But for sure the truth, we know the truth. The player, his agent, the club and I. We know how many times he asked to go away to Atletico Madrid at the start of that season. During the season to go to China and at the end of the season to join again Atletico Madrid. This is the truth and honestly in my career, I want to have players who are concentrating on my team and not to consider my team a second choice. My team must be the first choice. It was an incredible season and I managed to give with the club the Diego Costa situation in the best possible way. But in the end, the truth was only that the player wanted to leave many times to Atletico Madrid and during the season to go to China 
because he wanted the best contract. Now, you have to admit that that's a possibility. We always knew that Diego Costa didn't want to leave Atletico Madrid, but they couldn't turn the money down from Chelsea, so he left. It was always rumoured that he couldn't settle in England. He never picked up the language properly. He was a fantastic centre-forward and someone that we loved and adored and still do. But you can't deny that it sounds as though Antonio Conte was is speaking the truth. He got his wish, he's gone back to Atletico Madrid, and that's it. So Antonio Conte has also been talking about the legacy he left at Chelsea. And I wanna, Obviously, I'm doing this video to get your opinions on Conte and the different situations he's been talking about because there's so much in his interview. But he's been talking about the legacy he left here. And he said, Stamford Bridge will always have a place in my heart, for sure, because it was two years I lived with that great intensity and I felt it from the first day the fans were with me in every moment. To win in my first season with Chelsea was incredible because if you remember very well, the year before Chelsea ended 10th in the table. And if you also remember, our transfer market was an important transfer market. I remember I wanted Nagolo Conte and he was an incredible buy for us. Then we bought Marcus Alonso. And at the time we played with Fiorentina and not all the people in the club were 100% on my side in this buy. Then we bought David Lewis, who had problems in Chelsea. So we didn't have an important transfer market. But in that season, we won the title and played the final of the FA Cup against Arsenal. I think that period was an incredible success for me, for the players and for the club. And he did. He, he, he was outstanding. And he just proved that his tactical knowledge and for someone to get the best out of a team that he's inherited with one or two additions was there for all to see. He allowed them, as I said before, to go with the way they've been used to. Then he made the switch in what he believed would suit everyone, the formation, and it was just incredible. So finally, he's been talking about, obviously, Roman Abramovich and the club itself and the involvement and different things like that. And it's quite an interesting read. He said, it's always difficult when there's a stopgap between the club and the coach. I think never, never the club tried to explain the decision. But in our job, we must accept this type of situation. To be the coach of Chelsea is not simple. You must live with great pressure, especially from the outside. But it was a pity to stop my coaching after only two seasons because I created a real link with the fans and the players. Sometimes you can agree because the results are negative and sometimes you don't understand why. But I think you must accept, and I keep good memories with Chelsea, the club with Mr Abramovich, who is a very passionate man, for his football. It was incredible, especially in my first season, because he was very, very close to me, asking about my football and my ideas. Many times he came to the training ground to meet me, and I remember he wanted to watch the video about our game and our preparation, the way we wanted to face the opponent. I think in my career he was one of the most passionate men about football, and I keep good memories about him and about the club, an important club in the world. Antonio Conte is just an outstanding outstanding manager he really is a lot of people said he failed you know he couldn't cut it in the second season imagine as i said if he got those players in lukaku and virgil van dyke what would have happened you can imagine that diego costa would have gone lukaku would have come in we obviously got alvaro morata and we all know what happened he's gone back to atletico madrid and saying this is his home now he's been shipped out to juve so it's football's a funny old game and there are people that come into the club or there's players and managers that come through your club and some make an impact, some are just make a real impact. Some people just sort of come through and, and sort of fail to adapt or fail to shine or struggle. Antonio Conte was never one of those people. And, you know, the Chelsea fans took to Antonio Conte pretty much straight away. You just you just remember standing up in the stand in Stamford Bridge in the stands chanting Antonio and the the whole echo all around the ground and the fact that he stood there and he was even shocked himself and he just couldn't believe it and it was just such a good feeling when he was the manager some of the best football we've played in a long time and that Chelsea game against Everton at Stamford Bridge when we thumped them five nil is arguably up there for me as one of the best performances I've ever seen from a Chelsea team. And that's saying something. Antonio Conte, outstanding manager. He makes some good points about, obviously, the players coming in. Costa, 
what happened to him, and obviously Roman Abramovich. What do you guys think about Conte and those four elements that he's been speaking about? What do you think about the possible signings of those two and the fact they never came in? What do you think about how he performed as the manager and what he did for the team in that first season and the second season, obviously, and his praise and his the, the positive light he holds the club in and Roman Abramovich, of course. Let me know in the comments section below. There's a lot of other Chelsea news going around at the moment, but because this is, is just such an intriguing interview with so much to feature, I wanted to do it today. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Drop a like on the video for me, as many of you as possible. Then subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. But make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss my videos come out. Thank you for watching. Look forward to reading your comments. See you all tomorrow.